What's going on everyone? Gareth here with FCP Euro. Welcome back to another DIY video. Today we're going to be working on this BMW E39 M5 on the lift behind us. So the project we're going to be working on today is replacing the brake master cylinder. Uh, we actually have a full diag video on this vehicle's braking system. A really common complaint on BMW E39s is a soft brake pedal, but not a traditionally soft brake pedal where there's no feeling at all. The brake pedal actually feels mostly okay, but it's almost like there's no stop in the pedal travel. Uh, at some point, the brake pedal should just stop because if you compress the brake system enough where there is no further that the pedal could travel, but on this car, it just seems to want to continue, and it's also somewhat intermittent. Uh, we checked for external leaks, we checked the brake calipers, we checked uh, functioning of the ABS system, everything checks out. So everything ultimately starts with the brake master cylinder. And truthfully, uh, these are an overlooked uh, maintenance item on a lot of cars because it's kind of buried under there and you don't really think about it too much as opposed to some of the other things like calipers or brake hoses or brake lines or things like that. So uh, we believe that what we have here is a worn out master cylinder. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to replace that today. With that said, let's talk about some of the tools we need to do this job, and then we can go ahead and jump right into it. Oh, hey, I just said we were gonna talk about tools, but yet somehow I'm wearing a totally different shirt, and my hair is also probably a little bit shorter. Well, let's just say, keep watching this DIY, you'll see how things go south. With that said, some of the tools you're gonna need just to remove the booster and remove the master cylinder and everything else, uh, 11 millimeter, nine millimeter, seven millimeter wrenches. You'll need a really good pair of dikes to cut Etiker clamps. Uh, Etiker clamp pliers, one of these multi-angled picks, super useful, Phillips head screwdrivers, quarter inch ratchet, 13 millimeter uh, deep quarter inch socket with a long extension. You'll need some kind of torque wrench that could do 23 newton meters of torque, not a huge amount. You'll need a brake bleeder, a catch bottle for the brake fluid, and uh, this is actually just brake parts cleaner. Anytime you're opening up a brake system, brake fluid's gonna leak all over the place. You really need to clean that up as fast as possible. So have brake cleaner on hand. It's gonna come in handy. And obviously tons of shop towels. But that said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. You'll see exactly where everything ends up. So um, we're gonna go ahead and start here by uh, removing the cabin filter housing here on the driver's side of the vehicle. Um, everything is located sort of in a cubby under here. Fortunately, this is very easy to remove. Uh, first, we're going to disconnect the uh, hood sensor, that's for the anti-theft. And then, um, seeing that this car is in really good condition, it actually has this uh, little retainer clip that we just have to depress and then slide off. Uh, most E39s of, uh, you know, this vintage, I'm talking 20-year-old cars, will not have these clips. That's actually supposed to secure the cabin filter housing to the strut tower, so... Kind of a flex, since it has both of them. Take the gasket there to the hood, and then we'll unclick this little duct here, and then we'll rotate it away from the air filter housing, like so. And then we'll open up the access cover, which allows us to unlock it from behind. And then we just lift up and remove the entire cabin filter housing out of the way, and there we have access to our master cylinder. I'm also gonna go ahead and just pull the duct out of the way, just so it's not resting on the plenum. All right, so now we uh, have access to our master cylinder reservoir and the master cylinder. First and foremost, I'm gonna disconnect our level sensor, get the connector up out of the way so it can't possibly get coated in brake fluid. And then we'll remove our cap, which has the integrated level sensor. Put this off to the side. All right, so next up we need to pull the strainer out. Uh, these strainers, they either come out easily or they come out really difficult. They kind of have like a self-retaining device, which I don't know why, uh, because it just needs to sit there and float there. Because they want to discourage people from removing them. But let me use these. Um, needle nose pliers that have uh, serrated grips on them in the jaws. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pull up on this thing without breaking it. That was a boatload of fun getting that out. So now that we have the strainer out, we can go ahead and dip our 
siphon into the reservoir and we'll remove as much of the brake fluid as possible. That will help prevent a mess when we go to pull this thing after. Next up, I'm gonna take some of these really absorbent shop towels. I'm gonna try to slide them underneath the uh, reservoir and the master cylinder. Not a ton of space, but I wanna to try to catch any brake fluid that uh, comes out of the flare lines once I break them free. Also, we have our clutch uh, master cylinder line too. Uh, the clutch hydraulics on this car are fed off the brake master cylinder, so we'll have a little bit of brake fluid that comes out of that as well. Again, you know, the name of the game here is trying not to create too much of a mess. The first thing we're gonna do is remove our uh, clutch master connection, clutch master cylinder connection. It's just a barb fitting. I like to rotate the hose first to kind of break the seal. And then we just gotta pull it off the reservoir. Next up, we have three 11 millimeter flare nuts that connect to the brake master. We have one here on the left side. We have one underneath the reservoir. And then we have one on the inboard side. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and break these free next. Expect more brake fluid to come out. Shocking, no brake fluid came out there. We'll take the win on that. Next up, we're gonna get our flare connection at the forward portion of the master cylinder. This is on the top facing upward. There we go. Our last uh, flare connection is gonna be over here. You can see it directly from the top. Unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to quite see it on camera, but we'll show you on the master cylinder where it is and we'll give it, be able to give you a shot. I'm just not gonna be able to film whatever it is that I'm doing when I'm down there just because I need the space to undo the flare nut. You know, it also occurred to me while I was struggling with the flare nut on this side, I was looking at the master cylinder reservoir and I noticed that there's no screw that secures it. It's actually just clipped in place. So I take back that statement. However, unclipping it from the reservoir or unclipping the reservoir from the master cylinder is still an absolute bear. Uh, it's gonna give me a lot more space to work and I need that space pretty, pretty badly. So I have to reach under the master cylinder with my right hand, try to push the lock tab off and then do that evenly on both sides and then somehow pull it off the grommets. <sighs> All right, welcome to the floor. Uh, next step, we need to unbolt the brake booster from the firewall and also disconnect the brake booster from the brake pedal. This, of course, is all underneath the under uh, dash panel that we need to remove first, so it's a bunch of Phillips head screws. From there, you'll have access to pretty much everything else, but uh, we have a nice little GoPro camera sitting here, so we'll try to show you uh, what we can see here, but here we go. Now, this is your uh, little door ajar alarm right here. There's two connectors you have to disconnect. Can't really show you that in video only because I could see it, but you have to depress the tabs, pull it out. And now from here, we can also see the clip that secures the brake booster to the brake pedal. Uh, I'm gonna remove this clip first for the brake pedal. Um, if you've ever done a clutch on a BMW before, uh, this clip will probably look familiar. It's the same style clip that secures the um, selector shaft or the uh, selector rod support and you got to push the pin out which it flew out but that's fine all right next up we need to take the two 13 millimeter nuts off the firewall here this will allow us to remove the brake booster so the brake pedal and the two nuts that secure the brake booster to the firewall have been removed. Uh, now we go back to the engine bay, pull the brake booster forward, and we should be able to pull it out as an assembly. Unfortunately, you can't pull the master out of this car without disconnecting the booster because of the room that they left you with the secondary firewall in the engine bay. So it just is what it is. All right, so next thing we have to do is remove the brake booster check valve from the brake booster. Been in there 20 something years so chances are it's not going to come out very easily i'm going to attempt to pry it out with uh, two screwdrivers trying to apply even pressure against the booster but if that doesn't work uh, i'm going to cut one of the uh, hose clamps that holds the hose to the booster so i can't do it that way as well but i'd prefer to just pull the check valve out so here we go 
one more piece of plastic to pull out. Looks like this tray is kind of in the way. All right, um, so at this point, we're ready to pull the booster and master cylinder assembly out. Oh, yeah. So we have the uh, brake booster removed from the car with the master cylinder. Again, not possible to pull the master cylinder out uh, with the installation location or that secondary firewall. You could pull the master cylinder out of the booster, uh, but you're basically a mil to half a mil short of it clearing, which is unfortunate. Um, but it's not too, too much work to, to pull the booster as a unit. So now that we're here on the bench, I uh, went ahead and let the master cylinder just sort of drain out a little bit. There's of course always gonna be brake fluid left in there. Uh, it's a good idea uh, to also inspect the booster while we have the master cylinder out. Number one, to make sure that brake fluid wasn't leaking inside of the booster. And uh, number two, we want to make sure there isn't any corrosion inside the booster. On E39s, for whatever reason, this booster is known to corrode internally, so we want to make sure that this isn't a problem that we're reinstalling. But that said, it's two 13 millimeter nuts that holds the master cylinder to the booster, so we'll go ahead and pull these off now. This has a uh, O-ring that seals the master cylinder internally. You can actually see it right here on the new one. This makes it a little bit difficult to uh, get out of the booster. So just trying to work it back and forth. Here we go. A little bit of corrosion on the backside of the master cylinder. Interesting. So the uh, brake booster is full of rust. So internally corroded, there's no way that we can reinstall this booster. And I think, you know, during our diagnostic on why this brake system felt the way that it did, one of my theories was that maybe this master cylinder had some wear within inside the bore and was allowing pressure to bypass internally. So don't think that's the case uh, because we could see some corrosion here on the back side of the master cylinder. It does appear to me that the seal at some point failed on this and allowed brake fluid to leak inside the brake booster. And that has caused all the corrosion and problems that we see here today. So, but I think this is a precautionary tale for any of the E39 owners out there if you're experiencing kind of a weird pedal feel and there's nothing obvious external this could be a place to look. Um, I've heard of these boosters getting rusty on the inside, but to have that much corrosion on the inside is, I mean, it's literally flaking out. So I think we found our smoking gun here. So definitely made the right decision by looking at the master cylinder. But in this case, if the master cylinder is leaking into the booster, you gotta replace the booster at the same time. So this is one of those repairs that is just kind of snowballing, um, but it does happen, so just be prepared if you are doing this job in your car. All right, so we're back. Um, order the brake booster. Obviously, I'm wearing a different color shirt, and my hair is probably a little bit shorter because some time has passed. It's the way it goes sometimes. Um, so here's the new booster. All nice and not rusted, which is great. So just need to take some of this packaging material off. Very important that we remove the foam from inside the uh, booster, otherwise we're gonna have some serious problems. I mean, nice satisfying boop. I also, uh, all these plugs that come with these parts, I, I like to hold on to these. You never know where you're gonna need them in the future. So I tend to uh, keep these in an assortment. And then here's the thing that we came to originally replace. Finally get into that. Things just got really out of control really quick on this. So the uh, new booster came with a replacement O-ring um, mounting nuts for the master cylinder. Also comes with the um, brake booster check valve grommet, so we don't need to install that. Uh, but our master cylinder already has the O-ring on it, and the master cylinder also came with um, locking nuts. I'm gonna use the locking nuts that BMW provides. They're the uh, deformation type lock nuts, which I kind of prefer. So we're gonna go with that. Oh, one more plug, gotta get that off. If you're looking at the brake booster straight on, Obviously these studs are offset. The master cylinder can be installed in either direction, but it can also only be installed in one way. The uh, check valve grommet is gonna be off to this side. So the master cylinder can only go in facing this direction like so. And we're gonna push it in, make sure that that O-ring um, locks in place because that's what seals the master cylinder to the booster. And we'll go ahead and install the hardware. And I'm gonna go ahead and torque the master cylinder to the booster. Uh, 23 newton meters. Nice. So 
We have the new master cylinder finally installed to a new booster, which was not originally part of the plan. Now we're gonna go ahead and throw it in the car. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and slide the uh, booster and master cylinder assembly back into the corner here of the engine bay. Um, pretty much the reverse of what we had to do to get it out. Just make sure that none of the brake lines are caught. Obviously, we wanna get the booster started. And we wanna make sure that we also have things like brake lines kind of relatively close to where they need to be to line up and uh, yeah we're in position so uh, at this point we're gonna go ahead and realign the booster with the brake pedal because that will definitely prevent us from getting the booster to the firewall if that's not lined up I'm going to uh, reinstall the pin back into our uh, brake pedal just so that this doesn't have a chance to move around on us and the uh, pin for the brake pedal needs to go in from this side and you can kind of see this little hook here that needs to go back into the brake pedal like so so now uh, we have the booster sitting flush against the firewall we'll go ahead and reinstall the mounting hardware for it it's these two 13 millimeter nuts and now we have the nuts started. We'll go ahead and tighten them down. We'll go ahead and work side to side here. Um, just because I do not want to get the booster kind of going unevenly against the firewall. And just to be thorough, we'll go ahead and uh, torque these nuts to 23 newton meters. All right, so now at this point, we'll reinstall the clip that secures the pin. And we are officially done uh, inside in the pedal bay area. Um, we also need to reinstall the cover, uh, but we'll do that later. Okay, so now we're at the point where we get to reinstall brake lines and stuff. And, uh, you know, obviously tons of room in our working area here. But the important thing is we need to get all of the threads here started by hand and obviously get the brake lines made it up to the correct portion on the master cylinder. The fortunate news is it's almost impossible to install them incorrectly. Um, but again, very important to get these started by hand. And if you're having a hard time getting the thread started, it's probably because of the angle of the line. Don't be afraid to bend these lines a little bit. You're not gonna damage them. They are relatively flexible. Now comes the painstaking process of tightening down these flare nuts. Pretty much just have to take our time here. We don't really have any other choice. Here is our new brake booster check valve. Like I said, I, I happen to take a look at this and I see some uh, corrosion inside of the check valve. I don't think that's going to be a problem, but since we have the part in stock, we're just going to go ahead and replace it. Um, it comes with the check valve, this breather hose, and this connection piece here. Uh, so what I have to do is cut this hose clamp here on this other breather hose uh, or vacuum hose, and we'll replace the clamp, and we'll actually install the clamp once this uh, check valve is installed in the brake booster. So we'll get everything lined up and then clamp it once it's done. All right, so... Go ahead and cut this clamp off. Or just break it, I mean, either way works. And we'll pull it out of this hose. Uh, might need to get a pick for that, just because uh, it's a barbed fitting and this old hose, while this has a little bit more flexibility to it than this does, um, any kind of barbed fitting that's been clamped, they tend to not come out very easily. So we'll be careful with it. I'm just putting a dab of uh, dielectric grease, which is silicone, on the barb here for our check valve. It just makes sliding it into the uh, brake booster grommet a little bit easier. So I know you didn't get to see that on camera, but the uh, trick here is you need to get the barb lined up evenly. And then once it's lined up, you need to give it a good firm push so it can get past the barb. Um, 
I found it easier to kind of have it cocked over the side like this and then use my thumb to push it uh, just strictly because the angle of this compartment makes it impossible to push it straight on from the front so you have to do it from the side and this gave me the most amount of room to do that. So now that we have that in, we can reinstall our little grommet on the check valve hose here, slide that back into position, and then uh, we will go ahead and install it into the secondary hose here with a brand new uh, Etiker clamp. And we're using these special Etiker clamp pliers. Uh, this will evenly and properly crimp um, this clamp. We're going to take some brake, par uh, some brake fluid and lubricate these grommets for our master cylinder reservoir, just make it easier to push it into place. It went on much easier than it came off, if you recall that, because I certainly do. And now we can reinstall this front brake line because we're not able to do so until this hose was repositioned where it needed to be. So now we'll go ahead and tighten down this forward flare nut on the master cylinder. One thing to note is another option for uninstalling the master cylinder and, and booster assembly is to disconnect the union fittings here on the outside within the engine bay. I chose not to do that because I didn't want brake fluid dripping down into the engine bay. I wanted to keep it contained in this corner. So doing it this way takes just a little bit more effort, but it also helps contain the mess. And brake fluid is pretty caustic stuff, so if you can kind of keep it contained, that's, in my opinion, a little bit better of a scenario. Um, so that's why I chose to do it by removing all the connections at the master cylinder versus undoing the connections out here. Now I'm going to go ahead and reinstall our uh, grommet here for the brake lines. You will not be able to see this, unfortunately, but I just need to make sure that one of these brake lines is snapped back into the grommets or the connectors, if you will, on the frame rail. We shifted around a little bit, so kind of popped out of its retainer. So I just want to make sure that it is properly secured back to the way it needs to be. And we'll go ahead and reinstall this right here, which kind of just locks all the grommets and everything in place. Like so. Next up we have our clutch hose. We'll just slip that back onto the barb here on the master cylinder reservoir. Like so. And uh, we'll go ahead and reinstall our strainer and we'll go ahead and fill with brake fluid. And for what it's worth, the strainer goes in super easily. Just going to be looking for leaks, although there should be no problem with that. And this is also going to naturally bleed down a little bit as well. So we'll just keep topping off. All right, so at this point, uh, we've hooked all the connections back up hydraulically. Uh, we're going to start with a pressure bleeder. Uh, this is a really good way to test the system, make sure that it's sealed only at, call it 14 pounds, which is a little bit on the high end, but we're going to start there. Uh, bleed procedure on this car, we're going to start in the rear right, rear left, front right, front left. So we're going to go from longest line to shortest line. We're see how much air we can get out that way. All right, I'm just going to pull the uh, power bleeder off right now and put the cap back on the master cylinder reservoir. Hop in the car real quick, pump the brake pedal, see what it feels like. Right off the rip, the pedal feels okay. It actually feels just ridiculously firm at the moment. Uh, I'm gonna start the car real quick. Uh, that'll provide vacuum to the brake booster and that'll kind of give me a better idea exactly what this is like. So at this point, brake pedal feels good. Uh, so we're gonna move to just bleed out the clutch real quick because we did disconnect um, the clutch feed line to the clutch master. So there's potentially some air in there. Just wanna make sure there's nothing. So we're gonna use a power bleeder for that. Uh, nothing may come out, but also not a bad idea to do it while uh, you had it open. So uh, yeah, we're just here under the car, have access here to the uh, bleeder on the slave cylinder. Like I said, because we had the master cylinder reservoir off, 
and the clutch master uses the brake master cylinder reservoir, we need to make sure that we have no air within the system either. It would be a real shame to be driving down the road and also not have a clutch pedal. So this is a seven millimeter. And to be honest with you, usually uh, clutch hydraulic systems are not bled anyway. So it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to get some fresh fluid in this thing. All right, so all the air definitely came out of that and the brake fluid coming out is clean. So we'll just close the bleeder. Um, at this point, while the car is up in the air, I'm gonna go to each corner of the car, clean all the bleeders off with some brake parts cleaner. I don't want any residual uh, fluid on the brake calipers of the bleeders. That way, when I come back, look at it later. Um, you know, I don't want to wonder if one of the bleeders is weeping or anything like that. Always important to clean the bleeders once you're done. All right, so at this point, brake pedal feels good. Clutch has been bled out, no leaks and we are ready to reassemble this corner of the car. So all the individual plastic pieces we took off, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall. So first off, if you remember, we removed this piece, uh, which kind of finishes blocking off the uh, back of our wiper transmission assembly. So we need to just slide this in. Fits in a very specific way. Literally just ends up sitting right there. Um, you can kind of see this little groove here that's gonna line up with this notch in the firewall. So once you have it lined up, it'll just pretty much just drop into position where it wants to be. And then we have a little 10 millimeter screw here that we need to uh, run in, so we'll do that real quick. Just gonna clean off the master cylinder reservoir here real quick. Again, just looking for any leaks, everything is dry. That's what we love to see. All that debris we also cleaned out too, so that's the cleanest. That cubby hole has probably been in about 20 years. So real important, make sure your drain tubes are clean and there's no debris. This will cause water to back up, which will eventually pull in this area, which will cause a series of problems. So now's a great time to clean it out, and this one is clean. But it's not really surprising because this car is generally kept inside of a garage. So it should be clean. And that just drops in like that beautifully. First try, got to love it. Lift this up real quick and get our hood sensor plugged back in. Nice. Next up, we'll slide in this duct here. This is for our HVAC. It just sits in that hole in the firewall. Let's make that lined up. There we go, it's sitting flush, and then we just rotate it. Unfortunately, it just popped out. Rotate it, and then we wanna get this piece to match up like so, and then it locks in like that. Next up, we will put our air box cover on, cabin filter air box cover, if you will. These all kinda line up like so, which locks it in place. Don't forget, like I said, this car is a rarity. It's an E39, it has both the clips that secure the cabin filter housings to the strut towers. Those are usually MIA, so we'll definitely wanna put that back. And then we will reinstall this hood seal like so. And we are now done in the engine bay. Reinstall this piece here. This is like your footwell, heat, and this panel sits in here in a very specific way, so I wanna make sure that get it in there right. It's kind of supported partially by the carpet and on the side, so kinda of just need to play around with it a little bit before everything lines up. Cool. All right, so that's how you go about replacing a master cylinder and brake booster and a brake booster check valve on an E39 M5. This will be pretty much the same process for any E39. Uh, obviously this start off is just a master cylinder replacement. However, it escalated quickly into other part replacements strictly because the booster was rotted out. There was some corrosion inside the check valve. So while we're here, we had to replace those items. We couldn't just let this car go back out with all those other issues. Uh, but ultimately we got it done, even though we had to wait a couple days to do it. Uh, we hope you learned a lot in this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comment box below. If you like this video, hit the like button. Always hit subscribe because we have a ton of videos on the way. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.